junior year is kind of known as the toughest year in general at high school. Uh, I was really stressed out because I was running out during my finals and obviously I needed to study for them. It got so bad that my doctor started recommending I switch medications just solely because of the fact we could not get it. And so now I have to go find another, which is a challenge all in itself. High school junior Caroline Harper struggles with ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, a neurological disorder that makes it difficult to focus at work and in school. Now she suffers from a nationwide shortage of Adderall, a stimulant used to treat the disorder. In October 2022, the FDA announced a shortage of Adderall, saying, there is not sufficient supply to continue to meet the U.S. market demand through certain producers. According to the FDA, the shortage is still in effect. Large pharmaceutical companies list the following reasons. Low inventory, existing customers only, back-ordered, or simply unavailable. So the problem with assessing a wait time for getting um, patients the prescriptions they need is we're always told that these medications are put in back order and because they're put in back order there's no timetable so this is a problem because someone who needs their medication either today or tomorrow when it was due we won't be able to give them what they need when these medications are in back order a radius within maybe 15 to 20 miles it's the same situation for other stores. The supply issue has been confounded by the, the increase in demand. And with most things you would expect, you increase demand, you increase supply. Well, the FDA lets each manufacturer have an allotment of active ingredient per year. So that meant they couldn't ramp up the supply like you would in normal manufacturing of tires or toys or what have you, right? Because they didn't have as much active ingredient. Adderall prescriptions for adults rose 15.1% during 2020. An increase during the COVID-19 pandemic has some questioning if there's now a risk of overdiagnosing. Chloe Lim is a college student who attends Chapman University and is set on her goal of working in film production. Chloe also has ADHD. Chloe moved to California the day after her 18th birthday. Growing up in Singapore, it was during elementary school where she started to notice something was off. There was this one subject, it was math, and I was like trying really hard on it and I was practicing every day, but I was not seeing my results and I just couldn't really understand the material. My mom couldn't figure it out if I was just like lazy or something. And then my cousin got diagnosed with ADHD. And my mom was like, oh my God, what if my daughter has ADHD? I went to three psychiatrists. They just decided like, yeah, I think we can start medicine. At 11 years old, Chloe was put on Ritalin, a stimulant often given to ADHD patients to increase dopamine levels in the brain. I mean, I do think the medicine helped, but to this day, I'm still like, okay, but they gave it to me so quickly. In many states across the US, Nearly 81% of children with ADHD take medication. According to the Centers for Disease Control, children as young as six can be recommended to start medication along with behavior therapy. Now, the Food and Drug Administration is asking for clinical trials with children as young as four. So when we talk about young children on stimulants, although it seems crazy, Giving an amphetamine to a hyperactive kid, the way that it works is allowing the kid to be at a constant high level, which allows them to adapt to that level of hyperactivity, which actually allows them to calm down and to focus. From a medicinal standpoint, even though the medications have risk, the benefit is viewed to outweigh the risk. A study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association determined that from 2007 to 2016, ADHD rose over 26% in children and 123% in adults. Chapman's Disability Services Director, Jason McAlexander, 
says the rise may be a long overdue sign that those who struggle with mental health are now getting properly diagnosed. Diagnoses are conditions that we're still understanding. Back in the day, you probably didn't identify somebody with the diagnosis of autism. Now, is there a lot more kids with autism or are we identifying it better and more thoroughly? And so I think with ADHD, a lot of students or individuals had ADHD and now we're just identifying or putting a label on those characteristics. We have to hold the medical community ethically responsible in diagnosing those things appropriately. And if the diagnosis is there, if the symptoms are there, then the diagnosis should stand. So you think you might have ADHD? Well, here's three signs that you might actually have ADHD. With technology and social media, we want a lot of information and we want it quickly and we want it in short bits. So does that mean we have ADHD? We're yearning for short chunks of information and not the long form of a sitting down and reading an article. Yeah, those online sites of, do you have ADHD or do you have Crohn's disease or do you have anxiety? Okay, those might be fun to look at to start your self-reflection, but obviously go see a professional when you want to really get diagnosed and really maybe treat some symptoms that are aggravating to you. I think we inquired about like, where are you getting it? Is there a chance you can order more? And when would it arrive? And they were basically clueless. They really didn't know. I think people should not be afraid of having their lifelines taken from them. Um, accessibility is a really hard thing for a lot of people. And so having this taken away has really affected a lot of people with ADHD. I don't really know what it's going to look like. I don't think anybody really knows. Even the psychiatrists don't know. Like people who are like important medical figures really don't know either. I don't really know what the future looks like and I'm kind of scared for it. Reporting for Chapman University, I'm Kaylin Greenberg.